Tonight, it's an in-studio performance and a conversation with J.T. Lewis. What's going on, man? It's the 9 o'clock news local edition here on Rock 93.7, and we are talking with J.T. tonight about how many songs have you gotten together so far? Oh, man, as a writer, I got more than I can count. Out in public, however, there's only four that you can get. You say it like that, I have to wonder if this means when he's home in private, he plays a full concert with like 20 songs, <laughs> but you're only getting a few in public. Oh, no, and, and well, when I go and do shows, uh, I probably play anywhere from 8 to 12 originals per set. What you can buy online or hear online. I'm still sticking four. with the in private, you're playing 20 different songs that they didn't get in here. <laughs> what kind of music do you do? Uh, my artist stuff is primarily like current country. As a writer, I'm kind of all over the place, pop to rock to country. Whatever your mood is, that's what you're writing for. Yeah, at this point, I kind of just write whatever I feel like writing. Where do you and call it makes home? It fun. Uh, I call home Nashville now. I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana originally. There's home there too, but my home now, I've got roots in, roots in Nashville. See, you said that. I'm calling this home, and now I'm hearing calling Baton Rouge in my head. That's, yeah, see, oh, now yeah. that's stuck in there. And we're back to the country, which is what we're going to talk about tonight, uh, the music that you do perform. Mm-hmm. We're going to get to know a little bit about that. We'll talk about what the music that you have recorded that you share in public and a whole lot more as we talk tonight with J.T. Lewis on the 9 o'clock News Local Edition here on Rock 93.7. Tonight, we are talking with J.T. Lewis, You're getting to know a little bit about his music on the 9 o'clock News Local Edition here on Rock 93.7. You could do what J.T.'s doing. You could be in studio talking with me. All you need to do, go to our website, rock937online.com. It's got information there about how you can submit your music and wind up on the show like he did. You started out from Louisiana. How did you wind up in Nashville? So I was in college at Loyola University in New Orleans, and I knew that eventually I wanted to pursue singing and songwriting in Nashville because of the whole country music thing. And then, uh, what was it, Uh, 2012 was when I graduated and that summer, I spent the whole summer in Nashville, and I decided that I needed to do the artist thing, in addition to being a writer. So I kind of moved back to my parents' house. I saved money for two years. I worked 50 hours a week at a mechanic shop and 30 hours a week a weekend on a TV show. And some nights I would work as like a stagehand just for a little extra cash. TV show? What TV show were you on? It was, was it? a regional TV show called Paradise, Louisiana. So oh, we did a okay. lot of hunting and fishing and... So I was kind of getting two birds stoned at once. I was doing like getting media trained and getting paid at the same time. So when the time was right, I think it was two years later, 2014. Yeah, January 2014. I was like, I've reached my mark. I'm going to move to Nashville and launch my business plan and make it happen. So you seem to be very goal driven, goal oriented. Are you on track with what you were planning? Or? Oh, Definitely. And it's one of those things, man, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. You've got to have some kind of plan in doing this. Uh, and you also have to have the work ethic. But that's a big part of what I do with music and what the kind of message that I share is like, you have to work hard, but it's not impossible. Like you can pursue your dreams. You can reach those goals. You got to put forth the work if you want it. Do you take that initiative when you're actually writing your music? Uh, the songs I write, they, they come in their own time, but they they come pretty plenty a lot of the time. I I do spend a lot of time in writers' rooms or inviting people to my house and writing weekly. And there's no shortage of songs right now. You said originally you were going to do the writing aspect, and then you decided to go ahead and pursue the artist side of it. So right. clearly, the passion comes from the writing of the music. Originally, I I felt that that was a more comfortable lifestyle, but then I just I felt that God was just calling me to do the artist thing. I feel comfortable on the stage. I feel comfortable in front of a microphone and in front of a camera and sharing, sharing a good message with people. Did you have to change your mindset or was it already instilled? I think it was kind of already instilled. I was just born to do it. Well, you've been writing songs and you have gotten together. I think we talked about, you've got a few that you've, we joked about playing out in public, but you do have a few that you performed, some that you've recorded. Uh, You've got some on an EP. I got four songs on an EP. It's called Shoot Straight. And then hopefully coming out with another EP this coming spring, 2017. Where does Shoot Straight come from? Shoot Straight was an idea I had after I had a conversation with my grandfather. And I said, I talked to him like four years ago about it. And he said, son, I I don't care what you do when you finish college, but whatever you do, do it the best you can. And like two weeks later, I started writing that song. And when a guy like my grandfather tells you something like that, you really take it to heart. 
You know what I mean? And he's probably the hardest working guy I know. In a crooked world, you got to shoot straight. That came from my grandfather. Words of wisdom and music, too. And music. It's J.T. Lewis. It shoots straight on the 9 o'clock news local edition here on Rock 93.7. Learning about shooting straight and what it takes to make his music. J.T. Lewis having a conversation with us tonight on the 9 o'clock news local edition here on Rock 93.7. Uh, J.T., you originally from uh, Louisiana. You now call mm-hmm. uh, Tennessee home. Has it been a culture shock? Uh, not so much. Before I really made the move to Nashville, I did have a handful of friends and some mentors up here. Very different, though. But I tell you, it's, it's got its perks. For one, it's not near as humid as Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I mean, you cannot walk from your car to work without sweating in Baton Rouge. Carrying a change of clothes to make sure you can have something to change exactly. into. You might get a little stanky. <laughs> um, up here, it'll get hot, but it'll never get Baton Rouge in the middle of the summer hot. And it'll get really cold, but it's never going to get New Hampshire blizzard cold. And it's too cold for me. As far as the culture change, though. When it comes to the music and approaching the style of music, I, Louisiana, a little bit more, you've got Cajun influence, you've got things like uh, Zydeco that come into play. Has that been a factor in your songwriting? I think it all plays a little bit of an impact, but I was, I, I grew up doing a lot of different music too. I played in rock bands. I played and actually I created a band where we took several pieces from our marching band and I composed all the music for them, and I played guitar, and it was like a punk band with a, a big brass section. So we did that for like two years. It was kind of fun. And I was on drumline, so I have a drummer's rhythm going on in my head. So all these things kind of come together. Composing pieces of punk marching bands. I don't yeah, think was... I've ever heard that described quite that way before. <laughs> Something a little bit different. Well, so you play drums, you play guitar. What all play instruments drums, do you play? Guitar, uh, sing, obviously. I can play piano pretty well. Um, I can play bass guitar. I've even played the Ocarina of Time from the Zelda game. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever included that in one of your songs? I have not. <laughs> so you, need to, you need to come up with Zelda songs. You're doing punk marching bands. You can. I know. Well, that was a long time ago, the punk stuff. But Learning these different instruments, or, or when you recorded the music, did you do your own instruments? or did you? I composed a lot of the stuff on it, but in the studio we had hired guns. Studio musicians helped out, but you kind of knew the direction it was going right. in. So maestro, add that to the list of things you accomplished. Right, right. Give me one of those little, uh, white, little, little white baton to uh, conduct with. Well, as you're writing, you say you, you wrote all the instrumentation as far as having it in your head and hearing it. Right. Does it make it more complicated because you know it should sound this way and it doesn't quite? I don't think it makes it more complicated. I think sometimes it makes it more complicated for other people when they hear one of my demos to know what it's going to sound like when it's fully produced. Uh, But then once it's fully produced, they're like, oh, that's what you meant. You know, and I'll so you click. don't just hear the rough draft, you hear the final product. Right. As far as learning the other instruments, what was the challenge in that? Just like with learning in any instrument, there's a little bit of a learning curve, but when you get it, you get it. I was kind of, I was self-taught on drums. I had a, a guitar teacher growing up, so that kind of came a little easier because I was taught. But drums, I kind of taught myself, but then when I joined Drumline, that took it to a whole nother level, and I started hearing measures and music differently. And I was able to subdiv- subdivide. So it, that actually, believe it or not, made my guitar playing that much better. Learning more instruments actually improves your playing. Right. Sounds. What about kazoo? Have you added that one? I'm, I've never really seriously played the <laughs> kazoo. I've messed around with the kazoo, but I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't consider myself a professional, I was, <laughs> professional kazoo. I was just checking. You said ocarina. So I thought <laughs> it's not that far of a leap, really. We've got more conversation with J.T. Lewis, and we're going to get him to play a song for us, too, as we continue on the 9 o'clock news local edition here on Rock 93.7. Learning about what it takes to make his music tonight as we have a conversation with J.T. Lewis on the 9 o'clock news local edition here on Rock 93.7. We discussed earlier you've learned a few different instruments. Mm -hmm. Having done that has kind of helped out with your songwriting as far as you say it's improved it? I don't know if, if learning instruments has improved my songwriting. It's improved my playing. The best thing that I've done to improve my songwriting, though, is probably writing with people who are actual writers. So when I first moved to town, it's not like I was instantly a great songwriter, you know, just 
because you write songs doesn't mean you're a good writer. It's like writing a story or writing anything else. You do have to develop that craft. But the more you do it, the better you get. So I wrote with guys that were better than me. I wrote with guys that were in, on my level and we grew together. What kind of attitude do you walk into a situation like that with? I remember the first co-write that I had with what they call pro writer, which is like a guy who's done it professionally, has cuts with whoever. Uh, I wrote with a good friend of mine. We're super close now. We write every week uh, for the most part. And then his friend who's written songs for, I mean, shoot, Kenny Chesney, Tim Duggar, Miley Cyrus, everybody under the sun. And I tell you what, I was, I'm not going to lie, I was nervous. Like I was about to go into a room and hang out with these guys on a level beyond where I was years ago. And then we actually wrote a song that day. And then I was like, man, this is pretty cool. I didn't, I had some to contribute, but it's not like I had a ton to contribute. But the more the time went on, the more that I worked with these guys, the more I was like throwing out ideas and I was more comfortable. And I kind of started understanding that the pen is just there well, now we don't really write on pen and paper anymore. We kind of like type everything on laptops. But it it clicked to me that the words that you put down are there to paint a picture. And whether it's your whether you're you're painting an emotional picture or making somebody see something, it kind of just started clicking after a while. And now I consider myself a writer. So you're adding that side of it as far as the songwriting goes. What about the performing? How often do you get out to perform? Right now, it's becoming nearly every weekend. We're hoping by uh, February of next year, it'll be every weekend. Who all do you go out and perform with? Just yourself? You and the guitar? or It depends. Uh, this weekend and last weekend, it was me by myself. Uh, the next time I'm taking my band out is September. We're going to do a little weekend in Texoma. How about... If we break out the guitar and get to that song, what are you going to play for us? Let's do it. I'm going to play a song called Anchor Me in the Sun. Uh, a friend of mine that I was writing with was out on a boat with some family uh, and uh, cousins and aunts, uncles. And the aunt said, man, I don't care where we go. Let's just, as long as you anchor me in the sun. And he goes, man, I think that'd be a good song idea. <laughs> <laughs> How did the melody come about? I couldn't even tell you. It was three of us, and we just kind of, me and another guy, started playing a couple chords and started mumbling some things. You know, we started doing stuff like that. Man, a songwriting session, if you don't know what's going on, you probably think it's the strangest thing you've ever witnessed because it's just a couple guys making noises. You don't really know what you're hearing, but then by the end of it, you got a song. And that came from that noise. Well, let's let you get the guitar. It's J.T. Lewis tonight on the 9 o'clock news local edition here on Rock 93.7. It's Anchor Me in the Sun. Chasing big dreams and smaller fortunes Left me cold and dang near frozen I'll be sight in ocean with a pretty young thing and my own guitar. I think it's time for a new demographic. More bikini and a less suit and jacket. A pair of thighs where the only traffic is a margarita line at the bamboo bar. Anchor me in the sun. Sing my feet in the sand somewhere. Crack a coconut and you fill it up with rum Anchor me in the sun Whoa Anchor me in the sun Living life at a palm tree's pace Wake up in the morning, do it all again, mom Anchor me in the sun Oh yeah I can see me chilling in a hammock Dreadlocks being all organic In my little corner of this big blue planet Where all I gotta work on is my tan all day Anchor me in the sun Sink my feet in the sand 
in some way Crack a coconut and you fill it up with rum Anchor me in the sun Whoa, anchor me in the sun Living life at a palm tree's pace Wake up in the morning, do it all again, mom Anchor me in the sun Oh, 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 We've been doing a little picking and grinning. Well, I've been doing the grinning. He did the picking. J.T. Lewis in tonight with us on the 9 o'clock news local edition here on Rock 93.7. Getting to know more about uh, your music. You moved from Louisiana to Tennessee. You now call this home and uh, you're, you're home online. Where would they find you there? Online. You can find me at jtlewismusic.com or on Facebook at facebook.com slash jtlewismusic or any of the Snapchat, Instagram, or Twitter at JT Lewis Music. Well, do you post? Uh, do you have songs up there that they can get on? I do. There's or? songs on the website. There's Spotify on the website. Some videos. Uh, YouTube. There's videos. I think we established you've got the one EP and you're working towards doing right. the other. So you lean more towards the EP over the album. Right. I feel like uh, for several reasons. One, an album costs a lot more money, and uh, I don't have the funds to really produce a full length. But in my mind, it's a little better from a marketing perspective because it's a digestible three to five songs. These days, it seems people are consuming music more on the the song by song basis. Right. So EP, probably a way to go. A lot of the bigger bands are doing that, too. So look for his other EP coming in the fall. In the spring, more than likely. Somewhere around next spring, maybe in Winter, that time spring-ish. frame. At some point, he'll have it, and of course, up at his website, he'll have details about that there, yes, too. Sir. And where you can go see him live. Highly recommend you go out and do that. And you said September, you're going out with the band, too. Yep, September, we're going to Texoma. JT Lewis, thank you for talking with us tonight. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. It's been a conversation with JT on the 9 o'clock News Local Edition here on Rock 93.7.